good morning. I'm, I'm uh, Dr. Chemings, and I will uh, talk about the uh, clinical application of shear wave elastography in uh, breast imaging. So we will see the state of the art and the real clinical application uh, in clinical practice, so in real life. So what can we do with this uh, uh, developing technique? So as you probably well know in, in breast imaging, uh, you, when you, you want to characterize a, a mass or a lesion under ultrasound, uh, this characterization is ben, based on morphological criteria that are listed in the Bayerasa lexicon. So this mass here, you know, um, demonstrates uh, regular margins, um, indistinct margins, sorry, uh, irregular shape, vertical axis, so it's highly suspicious, it's a Bayerasa 5 lesion, and of course it's a cancer. But in some situations, there are lesions which um, usual morphological criteria are not sufficient. You see this lesion here? This is a small mass with oval shape and well-defined uh, margins. Uh, there is a, a parallel orientation, so it seems to be probably benign. However, it was stiff at fine needle aspiration, so we decided to biopsy it. And at the end, eventually, it was um, an invasive carcinoma, high-grade invasive carcinoma. So this case shows that, that uh, in some situation, morphological criteria are not sufficient, and we need another parameter. And stiffness is a parameter that is known for many, for a long time. Uh, it's used in clinical at clinical examination, and we all know that stiff lesions are more suspicious than uh, soft lesions. And today, um, Shear wave elastography allows us to, to get this, to have this information for non-palpable lesions. All the um, many publications have shown that indeed breast cancer were stiffer when they were measured with shear wave elastography than benign lesion. And so a typically benign lesion will demonstrate this kind of uh, blue homogeneous uh, color pattern, while a uh, typically malignant lesion will show its uh, eye stiffness, yellow and red colors, and a heterogeneous pattern. But the question is, so there is difference between uh, malignant and benign lesion, but the question is, what can we do in real clinical practice? I will present you three situations where I think Share wave elastography really makes difference. First, uh, you will see that it can help characterize, characterize breast masses. I think that when you're, you're doing breast ultrasound, you, we are faced with very subtle images, and you will see that share wave elastography can help us in these situations. And we also uh, see that uh, share wave elastography can help. Uh, after MRI or other uh, imaging modalities uh, in second local to sound. I will also mention uh, other indications that are to date, to my opinion, more uh, in the field of research. So for breast masses characterization, first the authors studied the performance of uh, shear wave elastography alone, and they showed good performance with eye sensitivity and eye specificity. But when they compared their results to B-mode ultrasound, they not really found any significant difference. So shear wave elastography seems to be, to be good, but not better than B-mode ultrasound. Here you see in this study here, the overall performance of shear wave elastography are not significantly different from B-mode ultrasound. But they just realized that Share wave elastography, this additional information has not the same interest according to uh, B mode results. You see here, you have two typical lesions. One typically benign lesion, it's a cyst, here a virus 2 lesion, and here a virus 5 lesion, it's a typical cancer. And okay, it's interesting to, to have this stiffness information, but actually in, in clinical practice, it won't change your uh, clinical management. On the contrary, Regarding these two lesions here, you have a Bayer 3 lesion here and a Bayer 4 lesion here, it's more difficult to make difference between these two lesions. And in these situations, additional information regarding stiffness really improve your, uh, your skills and your performance to make difference between a suspicious 
mass here and a non-suspicious mass here. So after that, the others just realized that they had to evaluate the performance of, of the combination uh, between shear wave elastography and uh, B-model to sound. Uh, in this publication by Berg in 2012, the authors evaluated the diagnosis strategy in which they decided to upgrade Byrad's three lesions that were stiff and to downgrade Byrad's four A lesions that were soft. And doing this, they showed that sensitivity was not changed, it's the same, but they observe an increase in terms of specificity, an increase of 17%. So you, you, you increase specificity and you don't change sensitivity. The, the same kind of results have been shown by Lee in Radiology 2014. This study has been performed in the uh, screening setting. And Lee suggested to downgrade Barrett's 4A lesions that were uh, perfectly soft. And doing this, you see that sensitivity is once again not changed, but they really increased significantly specificity. <clears throat> and so different authors showed that using this uh, strategy to uh, com combine shear wave elastography and B-mode imaging uh, allow, to, allow um, avoiding a high proportion of unnecessary biopsies. This is a clinical case to illustrate these uh, results, and you can find here two different patients with two palpable mass, here a 27-year-old patient with a palpable mass, and here a 50-year-old patient. And uh, I tell you that in these two lesions there is one cancer. So I don't know if uh, from where you are you can uh, you know where the cancer is, Usually, when, maybe we're too, too many uh, for a vote, but maybe I'll just give you two seconds to make your mind. Do you think the cancer is here? Do you think the cancer is here? Honestly, it's very difficult on, on morphological criteria to decide which one is a cancer. So maybe we can add shear wave elastography to, to make our decision. And you can see that actually this one is very suspicious. It's very stiff, heterogeneous color pattern, and this one is very soft. So this one was finally invasive uh, grade three, and this one was a fibroadenoma. Which is interesting here is that this mass here has been initially classified as the pirate three lesion in uh, another center. So here, elastography really allows you not to, to miss this uh, very aggressive cancer. Another case uh, here in this time, this is a 60-year-old patient with a non-palpable mass, and uh, the ultrasound has been performed first uh, in a device without shear wave elastography. And we were two of us, and we, we found that this small mass was doubtful. We did not know if it was suspicious or not, and uh, we did not agree together. So what, what we did is we just took the patient to the other room, the shear wave elastography room, to have an additional information. And finally, it was perfectly soft. So honestly, we did biopsy it anyway. But when pathology told us that it was cystic changes, we found that these results were concordant with, with imaging because of softness observed on shear wave elastography. This case shows us that sometimes analyzing uh, small images is very difficult on breast ultrasound. And uh, I think this is the second situation where shear wave elastography could be really useful, subtle images. And it has been shown in two different publications, uh, two retrospective studies, uh, in which the others evaluated uh, shear wave elastography for non-mass-like lesions, so subtle images. And um, they decided to downgrade Byrus 4A images to Byrus 3 uh, if they had uh, softness on shear elastography. Uh, you can note here 
that the threshold in these two studies were really different. But anyway, the two publications showed that they really increased positive predictive value or specificity of the technique, and therefore they conclude that shear wave elastography uh, allowed them avoiding uh, high proportion of unnecessary biopsy. So this is a clinical case that illustrates these results, and you see this 40-year-old patient. This patient was referred to our institution because of this non-mass lesion. She had final respiration, and final respiration revealed a possible radial scar. So it was a little bit strange, but you got this non-mass-like image on the left breast. We did perform the ultrasound of the right breast too, and we found a similar image in the other breast. So it's a little bit difficult to analyze. Possibly it's just it's not her normal breasts. Anyway, we just added the shear wave elastography information to make a more uh, specific uh, decision. And actually, this lesion for which the patient was referred was soft, and, this, and on the other breast, we found that a very suspicious shear wave elastography image. So, of course, we did biopsy the two lesions, and here it was finally not a radial scar, but a, a, a benign fibroadenoma, and we found an invasive ductal carcinoma of the other breast. So you see almost the same on B-mode images, difficult to make difference, but on shear wave elastography, it's very different, and you will biopsy this kind of lesion with high positive uh, rate. Another situation that I uh, daily uh, use in clinical practice is second lock ultrasound. It has been shown for MRI by Plesha in Radiology 2014 that shear wave elastography could help find and target biopsy uh, on lesion found after MRI in 23% of cases. And this is really what we experiment in, in clinical practice. Um, this is true for MRI. It helps you for subtle image after MRI, but it's also through, true for other techniques. This is a case here for contrast and on spectral mammography. You have a patient who was referred for um, a cancer in the upper outer aspect of the left breast here, and she had contrast and non spectral mammography, and the cancer is here, but we found this additional small lesion here. So we performed a second look ultrasound to find this lesion, and we found not nothing, but just a very subtle, non mass like area, and possibly this is a lesion, but possibly not. And there, once again, Shear wave elastography showing you a high area of stiffness really confirm that there is a suspicious lesion here. So we did biopsy this very subtle image targeting the, the needle on this stiff area and we got an additional invasive uh, cancer in, in the same breast. This is also true for microcalcification. You know that we, when we find calcification on mammogram, we can try to find them on ultrasound because uh, it, it provides additional information, and if you can biopsy it under ultrasound, it's a little bit faster than on, uh, under uh, stereotactic uh, guidance. And so, so this patient came for uh, microcalcification. Here you see isolated calcification with additional uh, asymmetry. And we did perform the ultrasound to find them, and we possibly find them. Maybe there is a quick spot here, so, but we're not sure. So maybe you won't do the biopsy under ultrasound guidance. If not, you're not sure there is something here. But if you do shear wave ultrasography, and in this case we did, that, we did that, you can find that there is a real stiffness area here. So there is something abnormal here. And it confirms that the calcification uh, are here. We did biopsy with corneal biopsy this area, and we found that it was in DCIS. Um, we have shown also, this is a, a work that is currently submitted, that uh, when isolated calcification are associated with high stiffness value, uh, this is very highly predictive for malignancy. Moreover, uh, it has been shown in literature that um, biopsy-proven uh, DCIS uh, when they were associated with very high stiffness, it was predictive for 
the presence of an invasive component at surgical excision. So shear wave elastography really can help you even for calcifications. So as I said before, there are other indications that have been, that are studied in literature. I, I, I still think that this indication, this application are in the field of research. You, I don't think you can really use it, or it will change your management in clinical practice, but still it's very interesting to, to see that shear wave elastography uh, could be used to assess, respond to uh, to treatment, to neoadjuvant, uh, neoadjuvant uh, therapy. Uh, it has been shown in, uh, in animal models. It also has been shown in humans. And there is uh, even a recent publication showing that shear wave elastography was possibly better uh, than MRI to assess early response to treatment during the course of neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Other others also showed that shear wave elastography could reflect the, the, the underlying pathology. It has been shown in an uh, animal model. It has been shown in human. And really, some others showed that elastography and stiffness was directly correlated to uh, pathological prognosis factor of breast cancers. Anyways, it's still research. I don't think you can really change your management on the basis of these results. Like any other imaging techniques, I think it's very crucial to be aware of the limits of the technique. This is a developing technique, so there are limits, and it's very important to know them in order to, to, to make an optimal use of the technique. First, there are false negative and false positive results. This is a case here of a lesion that was found in an 80 year old patient on mammogram and there is a non mass like lesion on ultrasound and you see that it's soft anyway. It was a mucinous carcinoma, so they are soft cancers. Here, this is a mass in a young patient um, a small non palpable mass, it is stiff on shear wave elastography, and eventually uh, it revealed a fibroadenoma. So they are stiff, benign lesion. In this case, this patient has very small and very dense breast, and you see that we found an area of stiffness here. So we did the biopsy targeting this area of stiffness, and finally, it was just normal breast tissue. So they are soft cancers, they are stiff, benign lesion, and they are clinical situations where the technique is less reliable because it's difficult to get a reliable image. And especially in very small and dense breasts, sometimes you get stiffness that does not really uh, reveal a real lesion. Another limitation, and I'm sorry for the uh, researchers, but in, in real clinical practice, sometimes things are a little bit different than in a laboratory. And um, we observed that according to clinical conditions, uh, the result should be, it could be variable. Uh, in, in particular, according to the degree of manual compression you apply on the breast, you know that when you do breast ultrasound, you just apply a slight compression on the breast to, in order to get a correct BMOD image. And you see there that if we do the uh, elastography image of this typical cancer without any compression, it was difficult to get a uh, really suspicious image. But when you apply a slight compression, then you get your usual a stiff image. And we observed that in these two lesions, this is an example, but this is a benign lesion, this is a malignant lesion. When you apply absolutely no compression, sometimes it's difficult to make difference be between the two lesions. And if you apply increasing degrees of compression, you have progressive change in stiffness. So here, you, with a slight compression, you make difference between the benign and the uh, malignant lesion. But if you apply a strong compression in a benign lesion, you will get stiffness there. So the results you get are associated with the clinical condition and in particular the compression you apply on the probe when you do the ultrasound. So there is a learning curve. This is not a technique that you don't have to learn. You have to learn it exactly as B-mode ultrasound. Look at this case. This patient had a, a personal history of breast cancer in the right breast, very suspicious developing mass, and this mass has been found on ultrasound, and the uh, shear wave elastography has been performed by a person who had very little experience uh, with it. And look, it seems to be blue. So it could uh, cons be considered like a benign lesion, but 
when it has been performed by other radiologists with more experience, this lesion was finally hard. So there is a learning curve. Uh, this is bad news. You have to, to learn this technique. The good news is when we teach this technique to our residents, it's not more difficult than usual BMOD ultrasound. So they really uh, become good with this technique very, very fast. And the pro big problem is when they used to do uh, breast imaging using this technique, and they have to leave the department to go elsewhere with no shear wave elastography, they feel a little bit lost. So this is a big, lim a big limitation. But first, if you have a, a, a doubtful image, just go back to morphology, because sometimes uh, the technique is less reliable. So for tomorrow, what to ex ex expect? Uh, Jeremy told you that there were new uh, uh, additional uh, tools, and uh, this one is Trivu. Uh, this tool to allows you to display at the same time the color Doppler results and the elastography results. Here, this is a, a skin recurrence, and you see this stiffness area with a slight vascularization, vascularity on, on Doppler, and this is a fibroadenoma, and you uh, have at the same time vascularity and stiffness information. So I think really it makes your uh, daily practice easier but anyway, I'm not absolutely sure it won't really change significantly the management you will have for your patient. On the contrary, I think there is other techniques that probably will uh, develop in the future that really change things, that will really change things. As I told you, compression has an impact on the quantitative results you, you obtain. And uh, Jeremy told you that there is a new developing technique, nonlinearity, or what he called stiffening, and that allows you to, to get another quantitative parameter uh, that uh, will give you additional information. So we conducted in, in Paris a clinical study to, to test, to try to evaluate this new technique in eight uh, volunteer, volunteers, eight patients with normal breast tissue, benign lesion, and malignant lesions. We modified the probe in order to be able to compress the, the breast. We apply uh, uh, compression on the breast, and there we try to calculate this uh, uh, nonlinear coefficient, this stiffening coefficient. These are uh, three examples in three patients. Here, a patient with a normal breast tissue. Here, a patient with a benign lesion. Here, a patient with a malignant lesion. You have the B mode image here. The shear model is here. And the nonlinear modulus or stiffening modulus here. And you see that uh, here you have the ratio between a row position over the lesion and another uh, row position over the surrounding normal breast tissue. And you see that this is, of course, a preliminary uh, work, but we see that we got really different results between these uh, three uh, situations. And our results show that possibly this, this technique could be feasible for uh, quantification of this new parameter. So these results should be validated in larger population. We hope that probably we'll, we'll get this software in commercially uh, available uh, um, device soon in order to, to evaluate it on, on uh, more patients. So as conclusion, I would say that in combination with B-modal to sound shear wave as good performance for breast lesion characterization, it has been widely shown in literature. It really increases uh, radiologist performance, increasing in, in particular specificity and then uh, avoiding unnecessary biopsies. But you have to be aware that the technique has some limits. There is a learning curve, so you have to learn it. And to my opinion, if the technique is still not used by all the radiologists in the world, this is because it's not teach properly uh, all the time. I think if we teach this technique properly, and maybe with other developing tool like uh, stiffening or nonlinear imaging, I'm pretty confident that the technique will be used in the near future uh, as a basic tool by all radiologists. Thank you.